Steve, how do you see the conundrum here? When you think about the moves in the market, not just today, frankly, this whole week, we'll talk about that more in a second, how do you think the market has reacted? Is it justified, the moves that you're seeing? Well, I think Kay brings up some, some great points. Uh, we like to take stock in the total picture, and as Mr. Goolsby laid out, the Fed has been very data dependent and on a, a long run trajectory for needing to, to validate certain data points for them to start to recalibrate policy as they're, as they're calling it. So we've expected throughout the whole year that the Fed would be on hold, that eventually they would start easing, uh, that there would be growing risks in the economy and the trajectory of economic growth. And so those risks are just becoming more to the forefront. And so now the, the two-sided nature of battling inflation and keeping the economy afloat uh, are now skewed more towards downside risks in the economy, as we saw with the, the jobs report this morning. And so we think that brings the Fed uh, closer to action. The most important point of the last uh, week and a half, really, has been the pulling forward of interest rate cuts and then the, the deepening of the trough uh, in the terminal rate. So seeing the terminal rate now closer to 3% is something we've been positioning for and something that we frankly think makes sense. To that end, too, that data that we saw today, depending on how you round it, see people are really worried about the triggering of the SOM rule, perhaps a, a greater play at a recession ahead. What is that risk in your view? Uh, I mean, we've been flagging it as an above normal risk of a slowdown and, and potentially a recession, but it's not our base case similar to K. Our base case is that uh, we will continue to grow potentially below uh, trend uh, of the last couple of years. But under the surface in the jobs report, it, as we've had a couple hours now, there's a little bit more mixed conclusions. It certainly was a weak report. Uh, and the greatest risk that we've been seeing has been the um, concentration in job gains to certain sectors. Uh, over uh, the last couple of months. So the broadening out of hiring uh, has, has not been there. And so uh, uh, there's been a lot of focus on the SOM rule. I mean, in short, it really just says that when the unemployment rate rises by 0.5%, 5, 5 it tends to not stop there. So we're, we're in danger zone, if you will, um, with employment. Um, but as Mr. Goolsby laid out, you know, next month's uh, release could, could change that trajectory a bit. I think what's important to us is acknowledging are risks one-sided or kind of uh, more equally distributed, and what does that mean for policy uh, and for rates? And so the moving forward of, of cuts, uh, the, the uh, deepening of the totality of cuts, uh, we think makes sense and aligns with how we're positioned. Steve, 10 seconds, 10 year at the end of 2025. At the end of 25, uh, in, the, in the mid to high threes, we expect an upward sloping yield curve and a normalization of, of yields going from, call it low threes, uh, upwards to four as you go out the yield curve. That curve steepening trade still in full play. That is Kay Herr of J.P. Morgan and Steve Brown of Guggenheim. Thank you both for joining us, of course, on a very busy day of economic news. Happy Friday to both of you.